For those of us lucky enough to have visited the Empire State Building, the view from the observation deck is worth the price of admission alone. Magnificent sweeping panoramas of New York and beyond. And for those of us with an aversion to heights, the sheer elevation of this magnificent building brings a tremor to the knees before one can enjoy those majestic sight lines. Hard to believe then that on the 1st of May 1947, a young woman named Evelyn McHale chose to end her life by jumping 86 floors from that same observation deck. McHale was originally from California and was born in Berkeley on the 20th of September, 1923. Her father worked in the banking industry, the family relocating to Washington in 1930. McHale's parents had a difficult marriage, which ended in divorce, largely due to her mother's mental illness. This was also the major factor in the courts granting full custody of Evelyn and her seven siblings to her father. The family moved again, this time to Tuckahoe, New York. By the time Evelyn had graduated from high school in 1942, the U.S. was embroiled in the Second World War. She joined the Women's Army Corps and was stationed in Jefferson City, Missouri. It was there that she would meet the man who would become her fiancé, Barry Rhodes, who was serving in the U.S. Air Force, from which he was discharged following the conflict. From there, McHale moved to Baldwin, New York on Long Island, where she worked as a bookkeeper and lived with her brother and sister-in-law. Evelyn's life seemed extremely normal until the 1st of May 1947. Taking a train to New York, she headed for the Empire State Building. Once on the observation deck, she took off her coat, folded it neatly, and then jumped. A security guard was close by, apparently within 10 feet, although Evelyn probably waited until his attention was elsewhere before climbing onto the barrier and leaping. In those days, there wasn't the cage there is today, and attempting what she did would have been quite straightforward. The police investigation focused on two things. Evelyn had visited her fiancé on the 30th of April in Easton, Pennsylvania. Some sort of contretemps there may have given Evelyn the motivation to do what she did. Yet Rhodes reported that all was well during the visit. There'd been no fight, no talk of breakup, and no hint from Evelyn of what was to come. Indeed, reports suggested that they were to be married at Barry's brother's house in Troy, New York, sometime in June 1947. The second line of inquiry was provided by Evelyn herself, a note which she had reportedly penned on the observation deck. It read, I don't want anyone in or out of my family to see any part of me. Could you destroy my body by cremation? I beg of you and my family, don't have any service for me or remembrance for me. My fiancé asked me to marry him in June. I don't think I would make a good wife for anybody. He's much better off without me. Tell my father I have too many of my mother's tendencies. The last line seemed to close the case, that a tragic consequence of genetics had led to the events on the observation deck. Her family acceded to the wishes expressed in the note. But the story would not end there. Evelyn had fallen onto a United Nations limousine that was parked on the street below. Four minutes after the event, a photography student named Robert Wiles took a picture of Evelyn where she lay, immortalizing her. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't show such a picture, but it's crisscrossed the world for decades and is regarded within the photography world as iconic. Secondly, it's remarkable that virtually no visible damage is evident, and many have commented that it looks as though she's sleeping. Time magazine called it, quote, the most beautiful suicide. It's sadly ironic that the iconic legacy of the picture is the exact opposite of what Evelyn wanted in her final expressed thoughts. As for Barry Rhodes, 
he became an engineer and moved to Florida. He died in Melbourne, Florida on the 9th of October 2007 and never did marry.